Hi everybody, welcome to the last Solomon's Tales. No green screen, I've packed it for moving. So that's the backdrop today, sorry. And I'm injured, I've got a sty or a, like a little cyst under the eyelid. And today is Boxing Day here in the UK. So Christmas Day I spent pain from the eye but enjoyed everything else and you'll see this well maybe in the new year but it is the last Solomon's Tales wow it's gone on for ages hasn't it <laughs> didn't realize how many but lots and I'm glad you've enjoyed them uh, what I'm actually gonna do with Solomon's Tales we're finishing today with a quick recap and then we're gonna morph it into Simon's Tales because there was a gap from my uh, stories when I first got the bar job so that's what we're going to do in Simon's Tales starting today in this one and uh, I'm going to carry that one on so it fills that gap and then you'll be able to work out the path that I took and Solomon took throughout the two-year period in Patea. So where did we leave Solomon? So Ning was away with a fella. Uh, Frozen was still Bangkok or somewhere with her fella. And Solomon had been given a job offer from the landlady where he stays above the soapy massage. Uh, Sue. So she'd taken him to the bar in Soy BJ which was formerly a nightclub and been closed down for some sort of uh, dodgy goings on and she'd bought the place cheap and sat on it for about a year. Now it seems that Sue and her husband were having a few little problems but he was running a money business that they had and she was running the soapy massage and this bar was another business um, that it looked like she would run but he would benefit as well from the finances so uh, Solomon had been shown around and given a set of keys basically you know have a look around when you want and let Sue know what sort of package you want as a manager to run this bar now Solomon had never had any experience apart from maybe one weekend in his life when he was a barman no experience with building work running a bar um, at all Sue mentioned that could do some building you know she would get the building work sorted out for the place and uh, he'd have to come up with salary and ideas and mamas and girls and get the bar running so at this point Solomon uh, disappears because his rent's paid for I believe it was another three weeks he's got the rented motorbike living in Sue's above Sue's uh, soapy massage and uh, Long Beach Road near Soy 4 all good and this really is where I came in <laughs> um, so why the Solomons, S-O-L-I-M-O-N-S, -O -O which was an anagram a lot of you worked out to Simon L-O-S. And uh, it was for obvious reasons because that's uh, part of my history that uh, was before I met my good lady and read between the lines. Go back and watch all the early ones. You know why we've called it Solomon's Tales. But at this point, we're gonna change the name from the next episode to Simon's Tales or maybe something else not sure haven't really thought about it but this is where I came in a few weeks rent left on the room uh, rented motorbike as I say no Ning about no frozen about and not much to go on as far as running a bar and setting a bar up no experience Simon's in his room 
and he's uh, it's sort of midday and he's having to think you know this is the chance to stay in Thailand um, but he'd need to find out about the legalities visas work permits what sort of salaries do bar managers get what do they have to do how many days nights do they have to work so a bit of research needed but she did say let me know tomorrow or the next day so he's gonna have to pull his finger out a bit or I'm gonna have to pull out my finger out a bit or I had to I gotta start talking about the past tense right so yes I I had to work out um, what to do and what I choose at the time was to uh, go and have a chat with people that have got bars so lunchtime ish I went and uh, up to Sharky's Paul Hall snooker club up on second road to catch hold of the boss there and let him know that I'd found a potential job and ask his advice and I got up there usual girls when you walk in recognize you and say hi and boss was there of course you have to have a beer it's only polite uh, had a chat with the boss can't remember his name and he said that the average wage for a bar manager and bearing in mind this is uh, 2000 2001 so it's 16 years ago the exchange rate was over 70 baht to the pound and he indicated that anything from 20,000 to 30,000 depending on what the package was would have been the ideal rate in the conversation I said to him about uh, Chris and he confirmed that Chris was back in the go-go bar next door and uh, that go-go bar opened all afternoon all evening and it was open so after the drink and kind chat um, no pool contest for about another three weeks due this was another thing I had to think about because I was getting a bit of an income from some of the pool killer pool contests um, could I continue those if I was managing a bar what would the hours be etc so that was in the back of my mind anyway I popped next door to the go go bar went in usual girls dancing Chris was at the back he was happy to see me and I went and sat down and another beer <laughs> anyway we had a chat and I told him the for lucky uh, bit of fortune I'd had um, and he sort of said the same as the other guy he was on a bit more but he was working seven nights a week seven afternoons seven nights no time off and he was on about 30,000 baht plus free drinks and he he sort of passed some of his wisdom on to me and said about if you get free drinks it's worth a few thousand baht a month and where are you going to live and all this so it all came into the equation anyway I stayed there for a while and we had a good chat and I said to him that uh, if he gets some time off to give me a ring and I'd love to show him the bar maybe he could give me an idea what needed doing and preferably in the next few days um, and as he said he only gets mornings off but he was willing to meet me um, not the next day but the day after in the morning down at that bar and have a look so that was good that was arranged and uh, off I went next stop was gonna be soy a friend of mine's bar uh, but he wasn't there till the evening so it was a case of go off and get some food I quite often frequented uh, second road because there were so many cafes Thai food uh, wherever the girls from the bars you used to eat you knew it was good food um, if you wanted Thai food if you wanted Western food back then there was a couple of cafes along second road three or four that I used to go to quite a bit uh, and mix up the food due to stomach 
I did flick backwards and forwards between the different foods and uh, so yeah the guy in the evenings bar in soy 8 I'd have to wait a few hours so had some lunch and went back to um, my room and as I came up the first stairs the, the stairs going into this uh, soapy massage were curved there was a bit of a water feature underneath no fish but as you start coming up the stairs smoke doors in front of you which went into the massage and the cashier sue or anyone inside seemed to, you could see out easier than you could see in so maybe it was one-way smoke doors anyway as I came up those stairs sue was in there and waved me in and spotted me so in I went and this was only uh, this was the same same day as I'd, I'd seen the bar in the morning and she beckoned me over and yeah free coffee and uh, mentioned to me that uh, she'd got some builders a couple of guys who were finishing a house off for her that were going to be free in the next few days so had I had any thoughts a few hours you know about the bar so we sat down and it was just common sense and it was yep get some big windows in the front because it was all just a concrete all concrete all along with the double sliding patio doors in the middle because it was a club it was all dark in there and blacked out so a couple of big windows were the obvious choice and right outside was the pavement but it was only about a meter from the front door to the edge of the pavement so you could get some small tables outside but the seats would have to be either side of the table with the back of the seat to the wall you could just about probably sit on the seats with your feet on the curb you didn't have traffic really going up and down soy bj occasional vehicle would go down to the bottom but very rare uh, it was more of a pedestrian street than uh, vehicles it was a dead end anyway um, but Sue yeah a couple of windows and so I was like yep yeah, painting get it light colour change all the lights and then Sue said she was going to pull the DJ system out because it was quite expensive and all the lighting and she'll use that somewhere else okay but need to get some sort of sound system in um, and she first time talked about she had a son who was a teenager and she said Solomon could a computer system he wanted a new computer could you run the music system off a computer and Solomon's yep I reckon you could computer you know a couple of hard drives with an amplifier and speakers and you'd be fine so and Solomon had seen this in many bars which is quite good so uh, she's already talking about sound systems and then she's straight on to the subject how do you have have you had a thought about money being a bar manager and a package well Solomon really wanted to see the guy in soy eight but he'd seen two people and got a rough idea being quite cute he, he said to her um, from the people I've spoken to they earn a thousand bars a day and she, she sort of she didn't didn't look shocked by that she immediately came back with a counter offer businesswoman and said would you like a room above the bar that you could stay in free and you live above the bar and straight away Solomon room six it's got a ensuite big jacuzzi couple of steps up with some glass well glass brick window you can't see through them they're just those tight bricks and brings light into the room um, with a step up and then you step down into the jacuzzi ensuite double bed a bit dark the room um, with a couple of bits of furniture and uh, he said yeah he said I like room six with a jacuzzi but could it be painted a light color and could could I get another bed and you you know because that one had obviously been used quite a bit and he sort of said yeah with a new bed and painted out and I'd love that room and Sue had straight back at him very good businesswoman so well has aircon that would be 5,000 baht a month 6,000 baht a month with jacuzzi new bed painted and Solomon's like oh, Solomon. 
Simon. Me. <laughs> this is going to take some getting used to. Transforming across. Um, and I remember uh, this negotiation well. <sighs> take some doing this well. Um, yeah, she, she said five, six thousand baht a month rent that would be. Off your thousand baht a day salary. And she said, uh, what else would you need? And I remember saying, all the bar, bar managers have free drink and um, no mention of food by any of them. So no food deals, but free drink, as much drink as they wanted and the ability to give customers drinks free to G the customers up and things. And she's like, yep, okay. So that's another 5,000, she's straight, she's computing 5,000 baht a month and I seem to, I remember thinking how her mind was working and she motorbike do you need a bike and I, I like I don't use a bike much but now and then they're useful and I remember saying to her yeah really need a bike in case I need to go and do any marketing or getting people in and and she's like okay and I remember that and she came straight back at me very clever and she said okay I'll give you 20,000 baht a month cash uh, I'll give you a motorbike she didn't say what sort or anything about it give you a motorbike and you can have room six with a jacuzzi we'll paint it have a new bed and some furniture um, we'll put extra lock on the door and uh, free drink and you can give we'll work out so many thousand baht a month free drinks allowance and at this point I chipped in and said you know not running the bar before to be able to get customers in I'm going to probably have to go to other bars and talk to those owners create pub crawls and stuff just trying to get people in I said that I'd probably need to go drinking at other bars to do these and she said okay she said for those times you go out which maybe once a week she'll give she'd give me uh, some drinking money so that's probably 500 baht a week you know so that's a couple of thousand baht a month but she was amicable to everything and she said if we think of anything else we'll figure it out but would you be happy with that and of course i'm like yes free bike free room with jacuzzi twenty thousand baht a month free alcohol it's heaven <laughs> everyone would be the same not that I knew anything about bars or what was going to be involved in the future. So that is how I negotiated the job and the money and how Solomon got to the end of his road and I started on this road. It's quite sad, end of Solomon's Tales. Should we call this Simon's Tales or something else maybe? If you fancy changing this, you can put some ideas below. Uh, how many episodes is this going to be? Well, I need to take you guys on the journey of that first bar. Because I've never really mentioned the stories of the first bar. And there's a few stories. So, this could be maybe 10 episodes. Maybe less. But I'll bring those to you. It fills the gap in from when all the stories from the second bar started with uh, the likes of Kirby and Apple and all the rest of it and yeah and once that's done and I've run this path with you it'll be time for me to move to Thailand and then we'll be on to different types of vlogs and different material so this ties up the channel quite nicely with the bar stuff Anyway, sad. I'm glad you enjoyed Solomon's Tales. Um, any questions, by all means, pop them below. And 
live stream I'm going to continue them on Tuesday evening 1700 UK time up until I move uh, beginning of March so you can always pop some questions on the live stream if you catch up with me and as this is Boxing Day can I wish all of you Happy New Year um, will you see this before I don't know <laughs> but anyway Happy New Year if it's after the first then I hope you had a happy New Year yeah New Year's Eve bye bye Solomon and I'll catch everybody soon on the next Simon's Tales or whatever we're going to call it bye for now <laughs>